Welcome to the Music for the Soul podcast, where we talk honestly about difficult things. This is a place where music, hope, and healing come together. I'm Becky Nordquist. And I'm Steve Seiler. Thanks so much for joining us. Today, we're speaking with Dawn Damon. Dawn is an author, podcaster, speaker, and Braveheart mentor. Dawn, thank you so much for being with us today. Hey, it's wonderful to be with you, and congratulations on this new podcast that you're doing. I'm really excited and thankful that you guys are going to be a voice in this arena. Good job. Thank you. Why don't you tell us how you met Dawn, because I believe that you guys met before Dawn and I met. Oh, my goodness. We're going to go way back. Time out for women conferences. Oh, man. <laughs> That's exactly right. I almost had wondered where we met too. Time out for women. Yesterday, I talked to Carol Kent and, oh. and we were talking about Julie Baker. So that seems like perfect timing. Those were the founders or Julie was and uh, mm -hmm. Carol was one of our speakers, but we had the opportunity to meet then. And I think it was very close after that, that we discovered, you know, we had similar passions and callings of God and, and past. Yeah, that was that was crazy. I think you were doing worship team and I was organizing the choir and doing some of the committee stuff. And you girls were so just such great encouragers during that time in my life to step out into uh, speaking ministry and sharing my story and going boldly with the wonderful hope of Christ through all of my story too. So I just, I just love you to pieces. It's so great to be with you today and just get to hear what you're up to and all that stuff. Thank you. I feel the love. Well, Dawn, I also met you through a music thing. Do you remember at the home concert up in Grand Rapids, we were doing a home concert for our project Dignity, Songs and Stories yes. for Caregivers, and you attended that and that began our relationship. And it's so funny that then I wound up meeting Becky at your house. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, how it all came together. And it was just really his favor and his divine order and, um, you know, the mysterious plan and divine connection of God, but for his purposes, he knew we were all mm -hmm. supposed to connect. I was going to say that home concert, it was like a seriously pivotal point in my life. It was really incredible. And the topic, oh my goodness, we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Yeah, we were in your home, Dawn, to, to share about the Innocent Child Project on the topic of sexual abuse, and uh, which is a great segue uh, to, to speak about uh, the song that we want to talk about today that I know has been important to you, the yeah. song Dead Hearts Don't Cry. And yeah. I wanted to ask you if you could share a little bit about why that song has been meaningful to you in your own journey. The song Dead Hearts Don't Cry gave some vocabulary to me in a time where I was still processing my healing. It was towards the end of my healing. And I, and that's a journey. Healing is, you know, we're always growing and another layer is, is coming. But mm -hmm. to the place where I would say that I really was finding peace with the trauma of my past as a, a victim of childhood sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. But the, the chorus says, you think the tears would flow from these wounded, weary eyes. You would think that tears would flow, but dead hearts don't cry. And the reason why that meant so much to me is because I was so numb for so many years, I could not cry. I could not access the pain. I had rage. That was easy. That was lazy. But I couldn't sort through it and say, I'm grieving. I was abandoned. I was disgusted with myself. I loathed. I felt alone. I couldn't sort out the emotions and I couldn't cry. And what I learned through my healing is that when you numb out, you don't get to choose that I'm going to have the happy emotions and the carefree and the, the feeling of love. If you numb, you lose all of the emotions. So I couldn't even cry for happy things. Mm. Dead hearts don't cry. But when I was singing that song at a conference that I was doing on the healing of childhood memories, I realized in that moment that my heart wasn't numb anymore. It wasn't dead anymore, that God had resurrected and I was alive and I could cry. I think I cried through 
the singing of that song the very first time. That's a wonderful story. I'm so glad to hear that. Oh my gosh. Hey, why don't we take a few moments and just listen to a little bit of Dead Hearts Don't Cry and then we'll continue our conversation. If you really knew Okay, well, Dawn, I know that you've written a couple of books about uh, your experience with abuse. Uh, Can you tell us a little bit about those? Absolutely. So when I was going through the revelation, really, first of all, that what had happened to me as a child was not over just because it was over, that in fact, the trauma of it, the post-trauma of it was living on and my body was telling on me panic attacks, depression, anxiety, anger, sleepless nights, stomach disorders, I had my gallbladder removed, stress. I was just a hot mess because I had unresolved trauma. But my husband at the time became the second victim of my childhood sexual abuse. Yes. It wasn't his fault, but he bore the brunt of all the anger, all the, you men are all the same, you know, all of that, that I didn't know what to do with in my young twenties. And so I was looking for some help anywhere for what do I do and how do I help my husband understand me? Because his idea of me getting well was just get over it. It's Hmm. just get over it, forgive and move on. And I don't say that to criticize him. That's just his, that's just the kind of guy he is. If, if you can't fix it with duct tape and a hammer, it can't be fixed. <laughs> you know, just mm-hmm. pound it or tape it, but get, <laughs> get past it. And so I, after I actually lost that marriage, we were married for 28 years and it ended and it ended. There were a variety of reasons, but I would say the root of it was because of the abuse that I suffered and his inability to know how to love me and be patient with me. And then my inability to see how my trauma was rejecting him and pushing him away and my lack of desire and intimacy and fear. And it was just a big old ball. So after my divorce, I met a a gentleman who was writing a book called When the Man You Love Was Abused, a guide to helping the man you love overcome childhood molestation. His name is Cecil Murphy, Mm -hmm. as you know, who wrote 90 Minutes in Heaven. And when I heard that, I had been collecting for the past 20 years a folder filled with thoughts and journal and articles because someday I was going to write that book. Mm -hmm. And I I, I had that folder and I was ready to release it and say, here, this is my research. You need to write it for the women now. And it came right back at me and they said, you need to write it for the women. So I wrote a book called When the Woman You Love Was Abused, A Husband's Guide to Helping His Wife Overcome Sexual Molestation. And my publisher with Kriegel. And then the follow-up book, When the Woman Abused Was You, Your Guide as a Woman to Overcoming Your, Your Childhood Abuse. So those were the first two books that I wrote because I was really passionate about being somewhat of a guide, if you will, or or that person that been there, done that. I have something to offer. I can speak to this. I know it well. And I still get emails from all over the United States and Canada of people who have read that book and will reach out with thanks or will reach out with questions Mm -hmm. because it's so prevalent. It's yes. so prevalent. One in three girls have been abused and one in six boys. 
ah, there it is. <laughs> and, and I think you know that our ministry, Music for the Soul, began with the issue of sexual abuse. That's that the first songs that we ever wrote um, yes. were around that issue. When we learned that number, that one in three number, it's one of those things where I, I wish that there were no need for your book, that there were no need for our songs, but we know the problem is pervasive and ongoing. And so I'm just moved, and I'm sure, Becky, you, you are as well as a survivor, by the, the courage it took to open up like that and be public with it, but, but how life-giving. Mm -hmm. What I love about something you said, you kind of were sharing how it ends up leaking out so often. You know, we do want just the Band-Aid and the quick fix, and we want to rush through it and get to the other side, but how imperative it is to really walk through the process of healing and I, I just love how you shared about that because physically it does affect you. And I, I come across many women that have similar stories of abuse and assault as small children, especially, and held secret. And it, it really, it holds you not just emotionally and mentally captive, but also physically captive. And, and often we don't look at that aspect that all of a sudden you're having panic, panic attacks and you can't figure out why your heart is racing all the time, but there's all this unresolved grieving that has to be done and walking through that process. So I just really appreciate your, your heart and your sharing and your book is tremendous. Um, I have many counselor friends that I've been able to recommend it to, and um, it's used in a counseling program that I'm involved with here in West Michigan. So it's mm. just, thank you so much for offering up your heart and your talents. Amen. Absolutely. You know, something I discovered too, Becky, when I was doing some research now with the way we are starting to understand the brain and what happens to the brain and trauma and, you know, how something will get stuck in the amygdala and it doesn't get back to the hippocampus. It doesn't process and all these things, but mm -hmm. you understand there's a language center of the brain that during trauma gets suppressed. And so you literally lose words. You, you can't talk. And so not only have we been taught, don't talk about it, but we literally can't talk about it. Mm. We, we were in trauma at the time. And so we, we can, we remember what we felt and, and, and what the panic we were experiencing, but we didn't have any language. It's almost like being pre-verbal and having trauma. And so finding language. That's why the music is so incredibly important because it opens up all the parts of the brain yes. and you're giving us lyrics and words. You're putting tools of healing in our hand and we're hearing those words and we're going, yes, yes, that's mm -hmm. it. And, and when you get a phrase or a word, I know we don't believe in magic, but you'll get what I mean. It's like that magic bullet. It's that, it's that aha moment. It's that revelation where you go, that's it. Mm -hmm. And you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. Mm -hmm. And that that's why we hear so often, I think, you know, you put words to my ache yes. because regardless of what kind of ache it is, there, there are just some aches in life. You they're so deep that you can't just like you talked about. And I love the science aspect of this. And I think we're starting to see more of it come out in the medical community as well, which is really exciting. Yeah. One of the things that's come up over and over again, when I've been working with survivors is the issue of shame. And I think that just to be able to feel known and understood and seen and heard in that aha moment you were talking about, Don, yeah. can be something that can set people free, or, or at least at the very least, open a crack in the door and some light gets in and they, and they begin to be able to have hope and not see themselves as shameful. Right. You know, and again, going back to the song that we so love, I love Dead Hearts. The song is she says, I feel like an accomplice. Why mm -hmm. didn't I stop this? I, am I evil and awful? You know, somehow did I cause this pain? Inside the demons shout it, but I can't talk about it. Mm -hmm. Those are the lyrics. I'm, I'm used, I'm confused, and it's eating me away. But, you know, she finds she finds healing um, because God, she realizes that she's hating herself and that shame is 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 taking her over. But it's only through God that he begins to lift that shame up off of us. Mm -hmm. And we find out it's not your fault. Not your fault. You, yes. you know, and that 
that you just said that, oh, wow. I mean, it just, when you go through that trauma, don't you think, I mean, your self-concept gets some co- so completely warped and misaligned. And then your concept of who God really is gets warped. And I always think of, you know, when we used to do those shrinky dinks in the oven, you remember those? I totally just <laughs> dated myself. But you know how like, they warp up? My kids they, oh, did the shrinky oh, dink. That's oh, what she dated. <laughs> but it's like they get all warped and kind of, you know, and I, I, I think as survivors and people who've gone through it, I believe we're more than survivors, right? Mm -hmm. So um, is that being part of our history? Let me phrase it that way. It is an incredible thing when God begins to heal that place of that wrong concept of self, that it isn't your fault. Mm -hmm. You are not bad. You are not shameful. You didn't ask for this to happen. All those lies that come associated with trauma like this, right? And then he gets to reveal who he really is too. And that changes everything. Don't you think? Yes. It's like you're saying you are not your abuse. Yes. Amen. Amen. You know, I'm thinking of how this song came about. I think one of the things that that has given our songs power, the power that they have, one of those things is that it is the people who've lived through it speaking. Dead hearts don't cry is actually something somebody said to me. Mm -hmm. I was talking with an abuse survivor and she was sharing about her abuse. And I don't know what I said that prompted that remark. I can't remember back to that, but I remember her saying, well, Steve, dead hearts don't cry. And I thought, oh my gosh. Yeah. You know, I thought she just encapsulated this whole thing. And so I carried that with me in my notebook for a while. And, and one afternoon up in the loft of, of Music for the Soul, I said, okay, I think it's time to try and write this. And, and I have, like you with your notebook and your journaling, I've spoken to so many people over the years, most of the lines of that song have were came directly out of conversations that I've had and things people have said to me. And I think, you know, when we when we can help reflect lived experience for the listener, then that's a connection point. Mm-hmm. That's really well said. Help reflect lived experience. Help and reflect. Help process. Help you think about it in a way that's redemptive. That's, mm-hmm. that's what you do. And that's what happens. And we get to reframe our story to say, okay, that's what happened to me, but it's not me. I'm not defined by that. And I can move on from this now with this trauma building into my life, all the resilience, all the grit, all the tenacity, yes. all the, the empathy, the compassion, the yes, some triggers or some there's some scars still there, but it helps me in my calling today to be the voice for those that yet haven't found theirs. And I'm good with that. Mm. Okay with that. You know, you Becky, you talked about the the image of God. For me, my abuse was, you know, my my patriarchal, you know, view and my person. And um, so you would think that. That's how I saw God. I always loved God because I I knew Jesus as a little girl, but I did always sense that there was I that maybe God wasn't happy with me. Like I wasn't mad at God, but I felt like I didn't measure up, and so that was a big pivot for me too. When I found out that He's like, no, you're perfect in my eyes. You all the I am statements, I'm whole, I'm redeemed, I'm perfect, I'm accepted, I'm loved, I'm washed, you know, all those things. Because that's the that's the work of shame is to just make you shrink and be yeah. small and put your head down. And um, that's why I'm so committed to helping women find their wholeness, live brave, put their shoulders back. He's the glory and the lifter of your head. Well, and I love a... that you you're such a great cheerleader. And I just know how you've spoken things into my life over the years. And I'm just so grateful because you, like I said, you're just a wonderful cheerleader and you're so solid in your knowledge of who our God is and the word of God. And I just love you Thank to you. pieces. Thank you. Love you too. Well, after what you've shared today, I'm sure our listeners are eager to know how they can find you and find your resources. Can you please share about that? Yes, I sure will. Well, first of all, they can find me. I'm on all the usual suspects of social media (laughs) under Dawn Damon. They can email me at dawn at braveheartedmentor, 
com. Let me say that again. I said it wrong. They can email me at dawn at braveheartmentor.com and also my website, dawndamon.com. So, and my books are all on Amazon, all available since the uh, other two on abuse. I've also written the freedom challenge. So, okay, we've gone through our healing. Now let's get that final freedom and get set free. So, yep, all there available for them. I highly recommend. <laughs> if I can say that, I highly recommend. Thank you. Good stuff. Good, Good stuff. to be with you guys. Thank you so much for having me on today. Oh, yeah. thank you, Dawn. You're such a blessing to us and to our world. Just so appreciate you so much. If you enjoyed the discussion today, please share it with a friend and give us a positive review on iTunes. And please visit our website, musicforthesoul.org, where you can stream or download every song in our catalog, including Dead Hearts Don't Cry, read our lyrics, our healing music guide, and our blog posts, and much more. And so we're going to go ahead out today with playing the entire song, Dead Hearts Don't Cry. God bless you and thank you for listening. I can accomplish Why didn't I stop this Evil and awful Somehow I caused this pain Inside the demon shouted But I can't talk about it I'm used and confused and Eating me away. You think the tears would flow? The never ending tide. You think the tears.